Welcome back to our channel, Chris is Behind the Camera. Today we're gonna show you how we shot the narrative portion of our short film, The City That Changed Our Life, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it. And we're gonna show you basically how to go from this to this. Let's go. Let's go roll the intro. There's no intro. There's only just one, there's a new slide now. Just go. Hello, what are we doing? We're doing a lighting tutorial. Have we done more than one? Uh... How many have we done? We've done more than two. All right, so we have the room set up. We've basically taken this like basement room that has no natural light because it's like 10 p.m. right now. And we've set up the lights to make it look nice. So we wanted to kind of run you guys through how we set up the lighting for that narrative shot, but also kind of show you like where to put your lights, if you're using a couple of lights, what practicals are, what key lights are, and just kind of run through how we did that kind of dramatic shot. And um, we like shooting the drone factory because it makes kind of a cool backdrop. It's like our latest little studio area. Yeah. Our key light here is the Aperture 120D, and that's on a light stand with wheels, so we can easily move it around. And we've got a newer softbox on that. So the softbox is giving us a really large light source, so it's really soft, it looks really good, and it's giving us those really pretty catch lights in the eye. So you can kind of see, like, see that, like, white window looking thing in my eyeball. It's called a catch light. When you're shooting people like in a narrative situation, unless you're going for a really dramatic look, you want to see catch lights in the eyes because it looks... Gives them a bit of life. Yeah, it brings your eyes to life. Instead of looking your like eyes look really dead if they don't have catch lights in them. Yeah, they do. And for the film, there were some parts where you the catch lights weren't as obvious. And sometimes if you're looking down or your face is at a certain angle, they might be less obvious. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're lighting a face. Reflection glasses. Yes, we get that question a lot. How do you yes. deal with reflection glasses? If I lower myself or subjectively raise the light, no light in the glasses. Yeah, so just get the light up higher. Ding! Have they disappeared yet? So that was a key light. That's the main light, the key light. This here is our hair light. This is what's gonna give Chris a separation on his hair and his shoulders from the background. I should, I should really need to shave. Oh my God, a piece of crust just fell off your face. Look, you I'm this. crusty, okay? Crumb. All my crust in 4K. So anyway, this is the Aperture 120D Mark II with the Light Dome Mini. So this softbox isn't gonna give you this huge ass light source, but it's really great for smaller spaces. If you wanna do a hair light or mount it on top or use it as your key light, it doesn't matter. But in this case, we wanted a nice soft light source that kind of fell on Chris's shoulders. It's, it's compact enough that we can get it up high enough to get it out of the shot, and that's key. So we've got that mounted on a really old boom arm and that's attached to a light stand with sandbag on the bottom so it doesn't tip over. Even though this softbox is smaller and therefore technically less soft, if you get closer to this or you move that big one further away, you could actually get a similar level of softness because the light source changes size relative to you. So by moving light source further away, it gets relatively smaller or moving it closer to you, it gets relatively bigger. Now, when you move the light source further away, you're gonna have to up the power of your light as well because as you move it further away, the light drops off. The you inverse have to, square law. Meh. You either have to increase the power of your light or if your light's at full power, then you might have to adjust your aperture or your ISO. If you're doing like product photography or small little like things on the desktop, you can get away with using small little light sources like this, which actually translate into massive light sources compared to a small subject. So if you're shooting like, say an action figure. Oh, this would be like a big window. This like would be like big... the equivalent of having like a whole bay of windows. The next light we have in the set is a Godox Godox SL200W. Now I actually don't recommend this light because the fan is super loud. We're using this light just to sl ever so slightly highlight the 3D printer in the background just to give the background a little more depth. So we've got a snoot on this and that snoot basically just focuses in the light on a certain area. So we've got that hitting right here on the 3D printer and we've got a CTO gel on that. So that's basically making it orange. It's making it the same white balance as the lamp. So instead of being this huge, lot, like large light source like our key light and our hair light, now it's this focused detail kind of light source. So we're able to just selectively highlight the 3D printer in the background just to give it a little bit of depth to the shot. And whatever's going on back here with the light lit up holes, the lamp, what's behind, the laptop, those are called practical lights. They're basically props in your shot 
that are giving off light that would normally you would expect to give off light. So a lamp, it's a practical light. So for a short film, we kind of knew like the vibe and the feel that we we're going for with the narrative. So we shot two separate kind of talking heads for that film. We shot Chris in this room, which is the setup you're seeing now. And then there was a narrative of me in a different scenario so we could both kind of tell our separate stories. So when you're planning and shooting a large and complex project like that, it really makes sense to take some time and plan out the project, storyboarding it, writing narratives, writing out scripts, shot lists. So I've been using this app called Milano to plan out all my videos. And I've been using it for the last few months and I started using it so much that I outran the free version and ended up purchasing the pro version. Dude, I don't pay for apps. I'm like, $1.99 for this calculator? No, I'll take the one with ads. I actually reached out to sponsor today's video. So thank you guys for sponsoring this. Which is a big coincidence. A huge coincidence. I wanna show you guys an example of how we use it. All right. Smooth move, x lax x lax It's kind of like a board here. It's kind of like an idea board and you can kind of like throw things down. You have a bunch of options over here. So a board would look like this and you can basically click into that and have multiple different types of content inside. So I've got some of our design stuff here as well. So, you know, the thumbnail of the video, some of our font choices and font layouts here. So you can drop PDFs and stuff in here, which I love. So like all of the files kind of in one place. So this is a PDF that I designed. This is kind of like focus statement, the graphics and branding are gonna look like. So anyway, you can kind of see why I love this app, right? My sister has actually been doing some work for me on Pixel Lens and we have a shared board through Milanote and so she can contribute and we can leave comments and stuff and uh, have to do lists and checklists and stuff, which makes like working with somebody incredible. But also like if you're more of like a visual person, which I am, like I like to see like different type hierarchies and checklists and stuff like that. And so it makes, it just makes organization and planning and stuff easier. If you guys want to check out Milanote, you can sign up for free, milanote.com slash Becky and Chris. Link is in the description. Yeah, I love it and uh, changed the way I work. So hopefully you guys like it too. Let's talk about this light over here. I have this Aperture um, ALM9. I love this little light. You can you dropped something, Mias. Well, I dropped a lot, Mias. This is a CTO gel or a color temperature orange gel. So this warms up the light. So if I put it on top, you can see it warms it up. Ghost stories. Anyway, I like this for just kind of throwing in a little wireless accent light. Yeah. But you strategically hid the M9 behind there. Yeah. Which is handy because it's battery operated. If you're strapped too, just use your phone. Well, yeah, and then just like stick a gel stick over it. Right there and well, yeah, hide some phones in your scenes if you need to. Yeah. Okay, let's have a final look at the shot. So this is the shot with just the ambient light and the practicals turned on in the background. This is our setup set here with the practical lights on. We've got the CTO gel on the aperture light behind the computer. The lamp is got a warm light bulb in it. And then of course the pegboard has that yellow glow. We can go ahead and turn on the snoot, which is just gonna spill a little bit of highlight onto that 3D printer. Pop that hair light on. That's just gonna give some separation on Chris's hair and shoulders from the background. And then we have the key light, which is our main light. Did I blind you? Yes, oh my God. <laughs> You're like, no! Everything is white balanced to that key light. So the background looks warmer than the main shot. Hopefully you guys found that helpful in terms of where to start with an empty dark room, where to put your lights, what they're called, what they do. And you know, if you only have one light, we did a video about three lighting setups you can use with one light. It's in the description boxes up here as well. And a couple of you guys were asking in the film to do a uh, video about how to light a dark room. So this is kind of our answer to that. The video we did about how to light a subject with one light, the key, I think, is if you only still only have one light, you have a bunch of other types of lights within your house, too. Oh, yeah, lamps. So use, use those as practicals. Yeah. Stick them in the background to light the background up, but still use that one light technique to light your subject. Use that your key light, and you can do a lot. Yeah, and if you white balance to your key light, everything in the background will kind of look warm, and you can use gels to change the colors. But you can also use your white balance to completely change the look of your room as well. If you gelled your main lights and white balance to that, that could completely change the color of whatever you got going on in the background. Well, anyway, I hope you guys found that video helpful. Yes. If you did, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't find me post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Plankton! <laughs> I asked Siri what I should be for Halloween, mm -hmm. and she told me I should be a ghost. All I need is an old spreadsheet. <laughs> what should I be for Halloween? Plankton. <laughs> Plankton! Spit on your chin. Where did that come from? Use it to highlight the 3D printer. You still have a booger! Wait, 20. 
Look, no you can rules. Pick your point. nose. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Yeah, but friends, you can, can definitely pick, pick your husband's nose. <laughs> it's called B-roll, Nicholas. Look it up. Huh? <laughs> wow! Look at that. It's huge back there. Wow! Wait, your hair so long besides coronavirus. Because I haven't got a haircut. Yeah, but what? But like, why else? No rules. I can't wait to French braid your hair. No rules. Oh, Says, idiot. <laughs> you look like a pumpkin. 